In this lesson, we'll learn how we can set the concept of our forest creature into an environment. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have the final rendition of our forest creature. And if you recall, as we were developing him, um, I was continually thinking of the environment in which he exists in. Um, perhaps some sort of forest or a jungle. Again, I imagine him as being a creature born right out of the earth. And so imagining the environment allowed me to basically choose all of these different textures, such as bark and moss and rock, and weave them all together onto our sketch. So what we'd like to do now is just finish out our entire composition by dropping in a nice background that reflects that environment that we've been visualizing. And we can achieve this by using a photo. So let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of our forest creature. And I've got a photo which I've added, and it's just on our forest BG layer in our layers panel. And this is an image taken in Hawaii. And it's just a very nice, vibrant, lush environment just a nice uh, rainforest setting that I think will work very well with our forest creature. So let's go ahead and, and just really quickly see what our concept looks like on top of it. Okay, so that looks, that looks all right, but the problem we're running into is the background is fighting with the foreground for attention. And that's because our eye doesn't really know where to focus. We see too much of the detail in the background and that doesn't really allow us to focus on the forest creature, which should be the main focal point. So what we want to do is kind of push that background back and make it more of a complement rather than a competitor with our forest creature. So the way we can do this is by using a smart filter, okay? And so a smart filter is different from applying just a filter from up here by going to filter. Um, it allows us to basically continually edit the filter without making any destructive changes to this actual background image, okay? So to enable a smart filter, we need to come to our layer containing our forest background. We're going to right click and go to convert to smart object. Okay, and we can tell it's a smart object now by that little bitty symbol that's been added to the thumbnail of the layer. So let's go up here to filter now. We're going to go to go going to go to blur and then to Gaussian blur. All right. And this brings up our Gaussian blur dialog box. And we basically have a little preview window in here where we can kind of preview the effects of the blur as we inc increase the radius slider. And so we can just kind of continually adjust adjust the blur of the background to wherever we want and we can click OK. And if we're unsatisfied with that, well, we can come over here to our Layers panel and we can see that we have that Smart Filter enabled. We can just double click on it, taking us back to our dialog box if we want to edit that background even further by blurring it. Okay, so now looking at this, it doesn't feel like the background is fighting for attention. It's secondary. So our main focus our initial focus is on our force creature and the background becomes a complement to it. And it feels now like he's in some sort of environment. Now there are a few additional tweaks that we can incorporate into the background to really help it complement the force creature even more. So we're going to do this by adding an adjustment layer. Again, we're, we're trying to not make any destructive edits to our background image in case we want to come back and make any additional adjustments. So we're going to come down here and just as before click on this little button of a circle that looks like it's split in half. And this time we're going to try out curves. Okay, so this brings up our curves box right here. And we want to be, be able, basically be able to control some of the different darks just within this background. So we can come over here and click on this little button. Looks like a hand with a finger pointing. And now we can come over and just click on different areas of dark spots in the image. And we can kind of start to pull them down. And so those darks will be reflected um, throughout the entire image. And it sets a little point right there on the curve. We can come over to another area and pull that down as well. Again, giving us another point 
that can be adjusted on the curve, okay? We can even come over to some of our highlighted areas and bump them up a little bit more. Again, we see that reflected on the curve as well with another point. Now we can also focus on just green itself. Right now, we've been basically adjusting red, blue, and green, but let's go ahead and focus on just green. Okay, so what we might want to do is just kind of warm up the entire background just a little bit. So just kind of pulling it down a little bit in that highlighted area. We can see how it feels just a little bit warmer. And now that really does feel like it just complements our forest creature just a lot more. In fact, we can make a quick comparison by just turning the visibility off for our curves adjustment layer. And I'm liking that a lot more. Again, we had a lot of warmth that we incorporated into our forest creature. And so kind of warming up the background as well as kind of bumping the darks up just a little bit I think uh, worked as well. Again, we have some nice shadows in our forest creature. Again, we've kept it subtle, and it's not competing against our main focal point, which is our forest creature. Now that we're analyzing the image as a whole, I am noticing one final thing that we really need to address. As I look at this entire piece, I feel like my eyes still have a little bit of trouble focusing on the forest creature, and that's because his entire form is very much detailed. It's, it's very clear and crisp. And so what we're going to focus on in the next lesson, our final lesson, is just adjusting the overall depth of field by just kind of blurring some parts of our forest creature non-destructively to really center our initial focus right in here on his face. So stick around, and we'll see you in our next and final lesson.